Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at back EMF and Lenz's Law. So let's get started. Now in the previous theory video for inductors and DC circuits, we saw that for an inductor in a DC circuit, the current in the circuit will take time to increase and decrease. We're now going to use back EMF and Lenz's Law to explain why this happens. So just a reminder, we said that when the switch is closed, the inductor will oppose the increase in current and take time to increase, whereas when the switch is open, the inductor will oppose the decrease in current and go down the way over time. So why does the current take time to increase and decrease, first of all? Well, when an inductor is placed in a circuit in which the current is changing, caused by the closing and opening of the switch in the above example, it generates a magnetic field around the coil which induces something called a back EMF, or in other words, a voltage that is acting backwards. Lenz's law states that the induced EMF always opposes the change in current which causes it. So by induced, we mean something that has been caused to happen. So this EMF has been produced due to the change in current by opening or closing the switch. So whilst the current is constant, there is no back EMF and the current is solely dependent on the resistance of the circuit, which in the case above would be 30 milliamps based on a 50 ohm resistor and a 1.5 volt battery. For both the growth and decay, we say that the induced EMF opposes the change in current. So for the growth of current, the current tries to increase from zero, but the induced EMF will act to prevent this increase. It therefore takes time for the current to reach its maximum value. Notice that the induced EMF in this case will act in the opposite direction to the circuit current, and that's so that it can try and oppose it. For the decay of current, however, the induced EMF acts in the same direction as the current in the circuit. Now the induced EMF is trying to prevent the decrease in the current, so it's almost trying to keep the current flowing. In terms of energy, the direction of the induced EMF must oppose the change in current. If it acted in the same direction as the increase in current, we would be able to produce more current for no energy. This would violate the conservation of energy. So what we've done here is we've explained why current will take time to increase and decrease in an inductive circuit, and we've used Lenz's law and the production of a back EMF to do this. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.